Plant medicine represents a long tradition of human wisdom and communion with the living landscape. The Indigenous People's Perspective Project through Atkins Arboretum and Washington College explores some ways that plants native to the Atlantic coast were used to support health and well-being. Eastern red cedar is a sacred tree for Indigenous peoples. It served many medicinal purposes. It was used as a tea to relieve colds and sores, and as a treatment for measles and rheumatism. The leaves were used to treat chest pains and made into ointments to relieve itching, and the berries were boiled in sweet milk to treat worms. Oak trees also offered many medicinal uses. Individuals bathed in bark tea for chills and fevers, drank it for relief of asthma, or applied the tea to chap skin. Traditional medicinal uses of American persimmon included treating sore throats and indigestion. The bark was chewed for heartburn and served as a tea for liver health. The roots and stems of blackberries were used in the treatment of cancer, dysentery, toothache, anemia, psoriasis, sore throat, rheumatism, colds, and minor bleeding. An infusion of the roots was used as a wash for sore eyes. As a tea, sassafras purified blood and healed skin diseases and rheumatism. The roots and berries treated nausea, fevers, fatigue, menstrual pains, and syphilis. It was used as a poultice for wounds and sores, a wash for sore eyes, and an anti-parasitic. All parts of violets were used internally and externally to treat heart problems, joint and bladder pain, diarrhea, indigestion, colds, fever, and sore throat. Indigenous peoples would bind the leaves on the head to help with headaches and use a poultice of crushed roots for skin infections. Black walnut bark was chewed for toothache and as a remedy for snake bites. An inner bark infusion was used for smallpox. A tea from the leaves treated goiter, and a poultice from the leaves and crushed holes of the nuts treated ringworm and hemorrhoids. The sap of black walnut was used externally as an anti-inflammatory. Milkweed supported treatment of kidney and urinary dysfunction, rheumatism, and backaches. Topically, it was used to remove warts and treat bee stings, cuts, and ringworm. The astringent inner bark of hickory trees was used to dress cuts and ruptured blood vessels. A decoction of river birch helped with stomach pain, and chewed leaves or tea served as a cold remedy and digestive aid. An elderberry bark infusion made an external analgesic. The berries and flowers were made into salves or burns. An infusion of the flowers treated colds. The leaves treated skin ailments and were used in steam baths to sweat out colds and headaches. Sumac treated sunburn, blisters, and venereal disease. The red berries were chewed to stop bedwetting. Babies were bathed in a decoction of leaves to help them walk. As a potent yet gentle medicine, the inner bark of slippery elm was used widely to poultice eyes, sores, burns, and wounds. Chewed or taken as a decoction, the bark soothed stomachs and treated a variety of complaints from heartburn to sore throats. Spicebush was used to treat colds, coughs, and swellings. The bark was steeped with dogwood, wild cherry, and corn whiskey to treat measles. The tea was consumed as a spring tonic. Witch hazel bark was combined with spicebush and Virginia pine needles as a tea for fevers. As a standalone tea, it treated sore throat, colds, and tuberculosis, and was used to bathe sores and skinned places. A decoction was used for muscular aches and bruises. Yarrow tea was taken for stomach problems, fever, and to support restful sleep. It was made into poultices for treating rashes, swelling, eczema, and spider bites. The astringent leaves treated hemorrhages and bleeding. The dried leaves were smoked to clear mucus from throats. By reconnecting to the land through an appreciation of medicinal plants used by indigenous peoples, we can support our own vitality as stewards of the place we inhabit.